Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Today, uh, on this lockdown, we are going to be looking at oligopoly behavior. And <clears throat> on this oligopoly behavior, I decided to look at isoprofit care, Connaught equilibrium, and Stagelbeck equilibrium. Right, and then the other ones will follow in the next lecture. So, in this oligopoly uh, behavior, we have two firms that are producing goods and 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 and, and, and services. So, in this, now we say, firm A is represented on the horizontal axis, and I'm gonna put it here. To say this is the quantity that is being produced by FM A, and then the quantity of FM B will be on this one here, uh, the vertical axis. Then now we have FM A on the horizontal axis, and then <clears throat> FM B on the vertical axis. So, what I want you to understand is that when we talk about ISO profit, it means that the FM is making the same profit. So, in this case now, we will have number one, this curve is called isoprofit. So therefore it means what? I will just put this pi here and then write A here to show that it's, it's the profit for firm A. <clears throat> what it means is that all points on the isoprofit means the same level of profit. So this means that if firm A is the firm B is the first one to produce in the system and they decide to say, we produce B1. That is their decision. So, FEM A can respond by producing A1 or they can respond by producing A2 if they want this level of profit. So, but the question is now, what will they produce? Will they produce A1 or A2? And the answer is very simple. They will produce A2 because if they produce A2, of this product it means that there is quite a lot of market um, uh, uh, coverage so because these people or these two firms are actually competing uh, 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 it would be nice to produce more than the other and still make the same profit right so we can this, this is how, how it works so what I want you to learn is that if this is the ISO profit and all points, like what, like point one and point two here, and maybe point three here as well on top, they all this they mean the same level of profit. So if this curve moves outward, shifts outward like this, and then now we've got the profit A, then and then and then this, this is the second profit uh, ISO profit curve. Now you can see that this curve shifted outward. That is what happened. So what is happening here is that. The more we shift upward this way, it means lower level of profit. So in this case now, I will just say uh, ISO profit A means more profit. More profit. And then ISO profit A1 means less profit. So, therefore, you can see that if you are shifting ISO profit outward, you are reducing the profit of the firm. But if you are uh, shifting it inward, and then, and then you are increasing the profit of the firm. Right. So, I'm going to draw the ISO profit now for firm B. And we still draw this plane the same way. We say this quantity of good A and this quantity of good could be. Now, I'm going to give the ISO profit for FEM B. So, it must be concave to the horizontal axis. And then now this is the ISO profit for FEM B. Now you can see that now at this pi, I say pi B to say ISO profit for FEM B. Now, same thing applies here. If we are on any point on as long as we are on this one 
we are making the same level of profit. So if A in this case is the first one to say, no, I'm going to produce A1, and then if B want to make this kind of profit, they will respond by producing B1, or they can produce B2. So, the same thing applies. If B is to choose here to say, do I respond by B1 or B2? They will go for B2 because if they go for B2 now, they will have bigger coverage in the market. And this is what oligopolists will want to do to cover, to have that bigger market compared to the other one. But how will B reduce his profit? B will reduce his profit by shifting this outward, this way. And then this will gonna be ISO profit B1. So now this shift, outward shift means the reduction in profit. So therefore it means what? If you ask the firm which one would they prefer, they will prefer the inner one because the inner one means the higher level of profit. But the outer one, of course, it means the lower level of, of profit. Now, this is what I wanted you to understand. But Connaught says, no, the competition in oligopoly depends on the reaction curves. So now what Connaught say, and, 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 and I'll just like you to say, core not equili equilibrium. Now, what Connaught says here is that this is still QB, this is still QA, but Connaught says there will be a reaction curve for FEM A, which will be this deeper one. And then this steeper one is the reaction curve. Reaction curve for FEM A. And then Then this flatter one is a reaction curve for FEM B. Now, because this is the reaction curve for FEM B, which means FEM B will strive by all means to be on his um, um, uh, reaction curve. So, Connaught equilibrium will be this, the, this point of intersection here. And I will just put the smaller A E to say equilibrium. Now, which means that if A decide to be here to choose to produce A1, his intention is to be somewhere here because if you draw this thing upward, then he will be somewhere on his reaction.